Hey everybody, Cody from Buck Builds here. Wanted to do a quick video for the 62 tow truck version. Um, this one is fairly complicated. I would not recommend this one for beginners. Um, the only body I have available right now is one that has the hood cut off and open for the engine. So I apologize for that. I left the other one at the shop conveniently for this video. It seems to happen. Um, so let's get into it real quick with the kit you will receive one chassis adjustable suspension um, metal enforced boom here so these shouldn't break under load um, the winch is not terribly strong the gears are very small and very i don't want to say fragile but they are very small so you know if you put too much pull on them it could war or strip the gear itself um other than that the back here is very strong we have a working winch on this one um took a lot of time in figuring out to get this to work so um you will receive the chassis you will not receive a thread thread is for you guys to find on your own what color you want I just used basic sewing thread out of a little kit that you get from Walmart. Uh, obviously gray in color, kind of a silverish gray. So I just have that here, for example, to show you guys this next part. Um, so you'll have the main winch gear. You'll have your thread go through and tie it around and then cut off your little edge. And then you will have this ready to go with a bar that goes through this hole right here. So that'll be your main winch holder. This one will be for your secondary gear and handle. Which handle is this guy right here. You have your secondary gear, which is going to have a very small hole in it. So once you get it on the bar or the rod, you can drop a tiny drop of super glue in there and it'll help hold it tight on the bar. So when you turn the lever, it will actually turn the gear, which will turn the winch. Um, you will receive two hooks, one, that is the style that you can put your thread in like a drop of super glue and then drop your thread into it kind of has this sleeve or you have the traditional style with the oh hey. again i'm doing this through my phone so i apologize a traditional hook with the hole that you can put the thread through and tie it both of them come with the kit. This one right here is going to be a free spool for back here on your boom. Let's get into threading this winch. This one's pretty similar to the other uh, 62 builds. It's just the winch that gets a little complicated. So you will have your main winch set up. You will have this tiny little hole. You gotta thread through. This is so difficult through a phone. All right, so we got it through. So I just start by pulling a little bit extra th Oh no! <laughs> Don't get frustrated. This, uh, this one has fought me numerous times, so... Oh, of course it's not gonna go back through now. <laughs> I got it too easy that first time. Oh, there it goes. Okay. All right, so don't drop it. Pull enough through that you can tie a knot 
all the way around. Oh man, I need to work on my through the camera skills. This is a whole new challenge, so bear with me. All right, so I don't have that much left on this side. So I will go ahead and pull this one around. Just to get a double knot on there. And normally I would trim the extra little bit off of here, but I don't seem to have my scissors on hand. So, long story short, now have a section of winch that you'll be able to wind your line up onto, however long you want to make it. There's quite a bit here to be able to wind up onto. Just remember you have to wind all that up with a little lever. So, for that, to that point right now, I'll take this guy right here and your gear looking at the front there's a little notch right here in oh come on focus right in the back of the cab wall and that done just right will pop right into there you will then take one of your rods here. You might have to use some tweezers or whatnot to get it to line up exactly the right point. Try not to hit your gear teeth. Oh, come on, you know I want to. Oh, no, oh, too low. This part will fight you a little bit. There's not any room to really move when it comes to these tiny little models. All right, so that's started. You can see how it's moving in there. Just got to make sure you get it lined up. On the other side, push it through. And it's going to be pretty tight because you have your string going through there also. Make sure you get it lined up. And what I like to do at this point, I'm all the way through the center, so I can still move it. So now I'd want to take some clippers, which I also don't have, so we'll have to make these work. So you're going to want to think that on this side, you still have to go through that post. So you want to take that distance and cut just short of that off of this side. So you'll hit it. Like so. And that way, when you go to push this through. Oh, we gotta get it lined up. I think we're a little low. This is, uh, like I said, a very fun little build, not for beginners at all. So you're trying to line up with this hole, which it looks like it is, but it's very, very tight tolerances. There it goes. Okay. So we still got a little bit more that we can push through. Okay, 
So just like with anything that has these pins, I recommend pushing it in, leaving a little bit just to fill with super glue so you can fill or like sand back over it and make it smooth. So your main winch line is now in place. So reach through with your tweezers. Grab your line, I'm gonna pull it back. Like so. And you can pull it all the way out. And you'll set it just like that for now. Next step is going to be your secondary gear. You're going to take and put the hole preferably facing up if you can so you can get to it easier. You're going to take your gear, you're going to start to put it in place. It's kind of a tighter fit. You push it in with your finger. Don't go too far down. Just leave it where you can to where it holds but you don't want to go too far down because then it makes it harder to get back up so very carefully get this to focus All right, so we are through. This part over here, before you push it all the way, I like to push this wire or your main lead line down under that. It's kind of a pain sometimes, but it's worth it because it holds it in place. Sometimes you gotta go back on this side, push that down. Okay, so you're gonna see how it's under there now. So it kinda holds it in place in there. So now, you wanna pull this back where that sits flush, you're not gonna glue. Oh, actually, I told you wrong. Do not, do not glue these ones. I am sorry, I, earlier in the video I had said to push those in to where there's enough to glue. You don't wanna glue those because then this will not turn. That was my mistake, I apologize. So hopefully you guys are watching this video all the way through. You don't wanna glue any of the ends on the ones that turn. So this part right here, you have a couple options. Um, I liked the way that I had it with the lever inside the bed, but you could make this longer and run it outside the bed. You might have to shave a little bit off the top like a little round circle to clear that so you could have that out here and be able to turn it easier on the inside of the bed you have to use tweezers to get that on there and be able to turn it um oh come on i'm gonna push from the other side this is kind of a tight fit too on this lever so be careful that you don't break the handle of the lever but I try to put something on this other side push it all the way on and that one might be a little bit too long but it's set up to where 
it's perfect length that it'll still turn if it's pushed all the way in. But you can see how that would be a pain in the in the body. I'll go ahead and slap it in here just to show. Same modifications as the regular 62 chassis that I make. Um, rear body post, front body post have to come out. So as you can see, with that right there, you'd have to use tweezers to get it down and turned all the way around, which is kind of a pain. Or you could like sand down just a tiny, tiny bit and extend that out to just be on the outside of the bed. Either way, it would be a clean look. I just wanted to keep everything on the inside because I wasn't really planning on using the actual winch part itself on a regular basis. I just thought it was cool that it worked. Okay, so we are on to the next part, which is going to be this little pulley right here. So you get your little ends. There might be some little bits of... Uh, printing supports left on there. Just sand it down nice and smooth. And this is going to be a fairly loose fit, especially once you get done. And then, so, Hold on, just second. next step that your gears are all installed now. You're going to look on the back side. There's a hole right here. You're going to take your line. Sometimes it's easier if you wet it. You're going to feed it through that hole. This can kind of be a pain in the butt if you can get it started and put your thumb there to hold it. You can use your tweezers to reach down in there and kind of push it through and then come back to the other side and pull it through. And you're going to pull it back to the front and put your thumb there so you're holding it under your thumb to the light bar. You're going to take your little pulley that you just sanded. This is a looser fit, so you want to kind of keep your finger there to hold it while you put your pin through. And typically, I would take time to put these pins through measure them out how long they need to be and then pull them back out to cut them and then press them back in um this fitting and this fitting are going to be really tight on this bar but the pulley is a little loose so it allows it to spin freely so just for the sake of the video i'm going to pull this back out a tiny bit Clip it, push it back in, which it might pop out on the other side, I don't know. Yep, I think it wants to, but it works for the video. So this part, you'd wind back up into your tow truck. I am not going to do that on the video. This part, you would take and put a, so I guess pick out which hook you want to use. If you want to use this one, you'll take and put your string through there, tie a knot, double knot it so it doesn't come loose. And I typically like to use this one just because it's a little bit cleaner of a look. You don't have to worry about knotting it. Um, you can take a toothpick and drop some super glue inside of there and then take your string, push it in 
and make sure it dries so it doesn't just pull right back out. But then you'd end up with just that little hook at the end of your string. But that pretty much concludes the assembly of the 62 tow truck. I guess if you have any questions, hit me up on Instagram. That's usually the easiest way. I will be posting pictures of all these, so if you have questions about them specifically after watching the videos, uh, feel free to post up there, or I will try and check back into YouTube often to see if there's any questions on there. Uh, thank you guys for supporting Buck Builds this far. We have had a great start of our business, and we continue to pump out new products like this with new innovations and unseen things in any kind of 164th diecast period so we're trying to stay ahead of the game for you guys bring you the coolest stuff possible make the coolest things possible and of course make it easier for you to make those things sneak peek of the replica of my 1-1 chevy this one, I was going to do a build video, but it doesn't really need it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Super, super detail in the interior. These are uh, my dad's initials here in the back. The truck was originally my dad's before he passed away, and I have done all the work to it to make it look like what it does now it was just an old work truck so i hope you guys enjoy this one too it should be fun to see what you guys do with a replica of my truck so awesome guys thanks for the support we'll talk soon